Hey, what's up, wrestling fans? I'm here with a very brief review and recap of RCW Presents Caged Warfare. May 11th, 2013 was the day I will promise you I will never forget. I was lucky enough to announce one of the best wrestling shows I've ever been a part of. Uh, top to bottom, this is a great show. Um, uh, it, all your favorite RCW superstars, new and old, plus some very, very special guests one night only. We had Lonesome Jay Bradley, who you've seen on TNA Impact Wrestling. We had Maria Canillis, former WWE Diva, Playboy cover model. We had Dan the Beast Severn, UFC Triple Crown Champion, former WWE Tag Team Champion. I mean, come on. That is just an awesome card. Not to mention all the regular awesome matches that you've seen before at RCW. Um, I have the card written down right here. Uh, we had a started the show off with a battle royal. Um, really, really cool mix of veterans and new people. We had people like Kevin Storm, Shining Matt Starr, Lance Story. Uh, we had Ox Baker Jr., uh, Denzel Bishop, and Steven Drockner. Um, I believe that was the final four, the last four people I mentioned. Um, we also had a, a Lumen, oh man, a, a Luminatory, a Lum, yeah. Uh, it, it was a very cool uh, mix of established veterans and new, new blood for new RCW. Um, well, it turned out that uh, Steven Drockner was able to get that win. Uh, this Battle Royal had a very special prize. It was a number one contendership for the RCW United States Championship. So uh, at the next show, which was uh, June 15th in Bourbon, uh, he would be able to challenge the U.S. title. Uh, then we had, in a singles match, Big Russ Jones taking on one half of the RCW Tag Team Champions, Big Daddy Dean. This is a really interesting matchup. Uh, we've seen these guys face off in tag team contests, but this is the first time they've been alone. Uh, and, man, they are they were having at it. Uh, I've, they were really up in their arsenal of move sets. These are two huge guys, and they're they're trying their best, man. They're, it is a brutal, brutal amount <laughs> of... Uh, violence in that ring, and uh, I give them both a lot of credit. Uh, Big Russ Jones got that win. Uh, thanks in a big part to effing Brutal Bruce Dillon being out there and wrecking some havoc. Uh, Russ didn't see it, so, you know, what what have you, you know. Um, then uh, we were supposed to have Denzel Bishop come out as part of the Rose Garden. Well, of course, a number one Duke of Hollywood, Johnny Rose, came out there and he decided to uh, enact a clause, and he uh, he made it so that Steven Drockner had to put his number one contendership on the line already against Denzel Bishop. Denzel Bishop, Steven Drockner, hell of com hell of a hell of a bunch of competitors, man. They are just they're they're crazy good, and it was a one heck of a match. Denzel Bishop got that win. Steven Drockner, uh, I don't think it's the last we're going to see of him, you know, but things happen. Uh, Denzel Bishop, he is rising up the roster in RCW. Mark my words, you can go back three shows ago, four shows ago, five shows ago, I was saying Denzel Bishop is going to be something to remember, someone to remember. And it's proven positive. I mean, heck, the guy's got a number one contendership for one of the most important titles there is. So, you know, Denzel Bishop, whether you uh, are a fan favorite or the most despised bad guy in history, you get the job done, man. Props to you. Uh, then we had a best two out of three falls match, a crazy grudge match. If you remember, 
Uh, the last show, uh, Jimmy W. beat the clock against Eli McFly, so he got to choose the stipulation. So he chose two out of three falls. No DQ, no countouts. Uh, Jimmy got the first fall via pinfall, and Eli got the second. Jimmy was able to uh, get that last pinfall, and it was a it was a barn burner match. I I don't see how this feeds over by a long shot. These guys uh, have have a lot of animosity towards each other. They were best of friends back in the day, but attitude can get you everywhere, and it can lead you to nowhere too. So these guys are uh, I, I definitely foresee. Uh, a long feud out of these two. We took a brief intermission, and a lucky fan won a raffle. Well, actually, uh, it was split between her, the husband and the wife, and they were able to have a five-minute special, one of a life, once in a lifetime, one of a kind, uh, in the ring meeting with Miss Maria Canillas, and that was very cool. Um, I was very, very impressed with uh, Miss Maria in that ring. She was uh, a big, uh, a big fan favorite in the ring, to say the least. Um, we had uh, Nikki St. John come out, and she actually uh, was upset that Heidi Lovelace was unable to make the show. So. It was determined that later on in the evening, Thunder Kitty would be her new opponent. So I'm going to give you a little uh, wait on that and see how that match turned out. Um, we came back, and we had a triple threat match between Jack Thriller, Jack Verville, and Dan B. Severn. Heck of a match. These guys, uh, it's not the first time they faced each other. It's the first time in RCW ring, but... Uh, Jack Verville and uh, Jack Thriller are no strangers to RCW, but Dan the B7, it's finally he's, he's here after some uh, long talks, and they had a great match, classic style. I mean, Dan the B7 is a beast in the ring. Uh, yeah, it's, it was a funny match, and it was also a brutal match at the same time. These guys definitely put it all out there every time, and I give Dan the B7 all the credit in the world, man. He is, there's rumors that this might be his last year of wrestling, and he still got it. So, you know, I'm proud to say that I got to see him wrestle, and I got to meet him, and I will show you some of the stuff that I purchased uh, and got from him uh, in a moment. Then we had Jay Bradley, <laughs> lonesome Jay Bradley, taking on Lewis Linden. Uh, these two guys couldn't be polar opposites. Lewis Linden is a fan favorite. He's a high-flying uh, person. He is just, his personality is just up there. Jay Bradley, pure evil. This guy, he picked the holy heck out of me. I've never been uh, so embarrassed in the ring in my life. And a lot of things have happened to me in the ring. So for me to say that, these guys put on a hell of a match, a barn burner. But uh, I, I can definitely say the most hated superstar in the RCW roster so far today is definitely Jay Bradley. Some say he crossed the line. Some say he's doing his job right. But uh, these two guys can wrestle. When it all boils down to being able to wrestle, being able to have a personality. And Jay Bradley, man, he, he's welcome back anytime. But uh, I'll definitely be watching out for you. So you're not going to embarrass me again in the ring. <laughs> but uh, Jay Bradley got that, that win uh, Yeah. Then we had a women's match We had Nikki St. John and Thunder Kitty uh, Nikki St. John refused to let referee Mike touch her So the owner of RCW came out Mr. J.B. Blackwell And he announced a very special referee for this match only you guessed it, Maria came out. Uh, I was Twitter painted seeing three of the loveliest young ladies I've ever seen in the ring at the same time, and it was a good, solid match. Uh, about a, 
a little less than 10 minute match and uh, Maria did a heck of a job refereeing. Um, Nikki was got in, got all up in Maria's face and you know, Maria overlooked a couple things after, you know, so Thunder Kitty was able to get that win uh, with a roll up after uh, a little back and forth between Maria and Nikki. If you want to see that match, as well as the other matches, make sure you check out the DVD that will be available at the June 15th show. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much of that. Then in the co-main event of the evening for the RCW Heavyweight title, we had the end of the world, Jake Oman, taking on your reigning and defending heavyweight champion, Mark Vandy. The, this is the first time you know these guys have fought in a singles match. It was supposed to happen in a triple threat match last month, but before Jake could get to the curtain, Karn Alexander just annihilated him. Uh, you know, a sneak attack, can't trust him, you know. Uh, luckily, Karn was barred from the building this evening, and uh, it, it was just a straightforward match. Back and forth, these guys just killed it. What a great, you know, 25-minute match. Just a wonderful back and forth display of uh, pure athleticism. Uh, Mark Fandy is still your champion. There was no dirty maneuvers here. It was a solid knee to the face that was able to put Jake Oman for the one, two, three. And it was, it was, uh, it was a great showing of mutual respect between the two guys. Uh, Jake actually at first ripped the title out of Vandy's hands. Uh, I didn't know what to expect, but then he put it right around Vandy's waist as a show of appreciation, so I give him a lot of credit for that. Uh, then in the main event of the evening, a 15-foot steel cage between RCW's very own United States Champion Super Diva and effing brutal Brutus Dillon. This is one of the most brutal matches I've ever seen. It wasn't your catch-as-catch can wrestling style. It wasn't you know, it wasn't a technical masterpiece. It was just a brutal, awesome display of steel. Whether it was a steel chair, which there was a lot of, or it was the steel mesh surrounding the four corners, it was a crazy match. Super Diva... You know, even though it was a steel cage, which is supposed to keep people out, Big Russ Jones managed to put in not one, but two tables. And he managed to put in not one, but two steel chairs at the behest of Brutus Dillon. However, Super Diva was able to get at least one of those on his side, when uh, he was able to steal chair the holy hell out of Bruce's head over and over and over again, then in his back, then in his head, then in his back. Uh, the final table that came in uh, left left the mark on uh, Super Diva's back as Brutus gave him the most epic power bomb I think I've ever seen in person uh, through that that table. It was crazy. However. Super D was able to retain in the long run after giving Brutus, without a doubt, the single worst, craziest steel chair to the face, to the head, to the dome. Uh, could have been cracked in half for all I know. It was it was brutal. You could hear it from a mile away. It was uh, bigger than a gunshot, man. Uh, Diva was able to retain uh, his anonymity. He was able to uh, get his original mask back and he it was a non-title match so he didn't have the title in line. However uh, the title will be in line on June 15th so you need to check that show out. Um, now I'm going to get to what I got at RCW. I got from Dan the Beast Severin, I got a t-shirt, it says Dan the Beast Severin, and it's got autographed to me, 
and it lists believe in yourself, educate yourself, adjust your attitude, study hard, and teach others. And so I'll give you a little advertisement there. Then I got, you might recognize this from a couple unboxings ago, but I had bought this uh, grudge match, Ken Shamrock and Dan Severin. I got that signed by Mr. Severin. And I gotta get Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock, are you there, buddy? If you're watching this, let me know. And last but not least, I got two gloves. Everlast brand gloves signed by Mr. Severin himself. Uh, if you happen to be watching this, I want to say thanks a lot, Mr. Severin. You're a great guy. I hope our paths cross again. Uh, these will be going on my mantle, or when I get a mantle, uh, right next to my Randy Couture signed uh, training mitt. So I haven't, haven't shown that before, but I will show it eventually. But I want to say thanks to everyone who came out, all the ring crew, the uh, of course the wrestlers, of course the wrestlers, the referees, the sound guys, uh, everybody who was there, the audience, the crowd. You guys are great. Nothing like seeing a great show, being a part of it, and uh, I'm going to get some much-needed sleep. Leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of the show. It's going to be there for June 15th, and then the next week is June 22nd in Plymouth. So I will see you in Bourbon. I'll see you in Plymouth, and you all have a great day.